Hello, my name is Christian Vogel and I'm working at Roche Diagnostics in the Department of Assay Development. The following talk will address how RVD and especially assay manufacturers implement metrological traceability and which challenges are or might be associated with this. In my talk, I will first briefly describe the ISO 17511 and its requirements. Then I will go into potential challenges for assay manufacturers and also into challenges associated with re-standardization. And finally, I will give an outlook of what it means to achieve standardization. The ISO 17511 is all about metrology, the science of measurement and metrological traceability the unbroken traceability chain from a result back to its reference. The first metrologic standard was established by the ancient Egyptians back in 2900 BC. They defined a certain length with the so-called royal Egyptian cubit, which helped them to highly precisely build their monuments like the pyramids. Metrological traceability allows and guarantees trueness and comparability of results, uniform decision limits and reference intervals, and method-independent epidemiological investigations and meta-analysis. Per ISO 17511, the IVD manufacturers shall describe the reference measurement system and calibration hierarchy, specify the uncertainty of their device, and also describe the validation studies to show and to confirm the claim of metrological traceability. This slide shows the calibration hierarchy as outlined in the ISO 17511 in full detail. Preferably the starting point is gravimetry or QNMR as the purest and highest order measurement procedure. The unbroken traceability chain then alternates between value assignment of a lower order reference material and the calibration of the lower order method down to the final lowest order, the patient result. With each step downwards to a lower order material or method, the uncertainty increases. IVD manufacturers not only have to establish a calibration hierarchy, they also have to guarantee that their products show high long-term consistency to the chosen reference. In order to achieve this, internal monitoring and control mechanisms have to be established by which every new production lot is assessed and released. Additionally, independent external quality assessment schemes help to monitor the consistency Preferably, such schemes are accuracy-based with target values assigned by an acknowledged reference method. So in order to implement and to fulfill all requirements of the ISO 17511 during the development of an IVD device, the strategy for traceability and standardization has to be assessed and defined very early in the project. The first validation lots produced after the feasibility phase have to undergo the so-called reference standardization, in which the traceability and value assignment is fixed. It is also checked whether the standardization process allows a feasible and consistent routine procedure. The value assignment and reading of all following lots will originate from this initial reference standardization. The defined calibration hierarchy is documented in a transfer protocol and a traceability report. For setting up the standardization strategy, several aspects have to be considered. Is the measurement to be detected clearly defined? Are there any clinical or diagnostic guidelines for the measurement? Are there any customer requirements to the measurement? Is a reference material or method available? Are there already established competitor products? What is the calibration hierarchy? What are the regulatory requirements in various countries for registering the IVD product?
If you look at this from a slightly different angle, one could differentiate between three perspectives. Topics regarding measurement, commutability and comparability. At the beginning of an IVD development, one has to obtain a broad and scientific understanding of the measurement which is to be detected. For example, the role it plays in the human body, its synthesis or uptake and its metabolism, and its abundance in various associated diseases. Also, one has to understand the history of the measurement. Are there already international guidelines or custom expectations for, for example, expected values? Is there reference material or reference method available? This already should set the starting point for standardization, the definition of the measurement and potential reference materials or methods. In a second step, one needs to look into the commutability of these potential reference materials. What is their composition? What is the recovery of native samples when calibrating the IVD product with the reference material? Is there any matrix effect seen? Is the reference material representative for the measurement in native samples? And finally, the last step focuses on comparability. Are reference methods available and also accessible for measurements? If not, are there zero panels with assigned target values available that could be used for a validation study? What are the regulatory requirements for comparability to a reference or predicate device? All these aspects and questions have to be considered and answered before a strategy standardization strategy can be fixed. Now, let me elaborate a bit on scientific challenges associated with the nature of the measurement. For developing an antibody-based IVD, it makes a big difference if the measurement is a small hapten, for example, a hormone, or a peptide or protein. While for haptens like hormones, LCMS is the well-established standard technology for reference methods, the antibody development is challenging due to the small size of the analyte. Proteins, on the other hand, usually contain many specific epitopes, which makes antibody development straightforward. But here, the challenges usually are with the reference method. Understanding the metabolic pathway the measurement is crucial for the specificity of an assay. Potential modifications, degradation or fragmentation, isoforms and cross-reacting substances, and above that, the respective biologic activity and relevance to be measured. All that has to be taken into account when developing a capturing or separation phase as the very basis of the assay specificity. So, in a nutshell, one has to get a clear picture and definition of the measurement. Only this understanding allows to set up traceability and specificity of an assay. Without any doubt, traceability to a higher order reference material or method has to be the goal of an IVD development. However, registration in some countries requires or at least would benefit from comparability to comparable IVD predicate device. The traceability of the own IVD product might or might not allow to be also comparable to the competitor product, depending on its calibration hierarchy. Once comparability becomes clear, the registration strategy might be discussed with the respective regulatory bodies. As said earlier, non-commutability of the reference material, or also known as matrix effect, could result in a break in the calibration hierarchy. One way out would be the approach as shown here on the right. The approach is using a secondary reference panel with target values assigned by the secondary reference measurement procedure instead of using a secondary certified reference material. 
The reference panel allows calibrating the manufacturer's selected measuring procedure with matrix composition and quality similar to the later patient sample. This approach is called split sample measurement design and can only be successful if all samples behave identically, independent of the health or disease status of an individual, and if the proposed IVD device shows good precision. Any grouping of samples or a too high scatter does not allow to apply this measurement design. All the various questions, aspects and requirements from the previous slides can be summarized in a decision tree. Starting with the definition of the measurement, it addresses challenges and helps to find options for drafting a traceability strategy. A similar decision tree can also be drawn for the mutability of a reference material. Let me apply this decision tree to two markers, HCG and 25-hydroxyvitamin D. In case of HCG, the measurement cannot be clearly defined due to various forms of HCG in the human body. A certain form of HCG, however, can be used as surrogate and allows traceability and a qualitative non-SI-based result. The certified reference material for HCG is commutable and allows setting up a direct and straightforward calibration hierarchy. In case of 25-hydroxyvitamin D, there is also no single measurement, as there are two relevant forms, 25-hydroxyvitamin D2 and 25-hydroxyvitamin D3. Neither can be used as a single surrogate, as there is no constant ratio or dependency between these two analytes. So the only option was to identify all relevant family members and developing reference methods for each of them. As hydroxyvitamin D is a small steroid, the method of choice was LCMS, which allows quantitation based on SI units. Regarding commutability, however, hydroxyvitamin D, as also many other steroids, bears some challenges. Purified analyzed by the zero matrices does not recover quantitatively. So in case of 25-hydroxyvitamin D, the split sample measurement design has to be applied. In the following two slides, I would like to address challenges that have to be considered when re-standardizing established IVDs. One successful project was the standardization of 25-hydroxyvitamin D assays. Before reference methods were available, IVD manufacturers generated their own standards based on different methodologies, such as chromometry, UV absorption or in-house GC or LC methods. These standards, however, very often were not commutable. The launch of DQAS as the first vitamin D specific quality assessment machine in 1989 was the first step to assess and to monitor intermethod reliability of 25 hydroxy vitamin D assays. The scheme identified the need of harmonization and standardization as final goal. And this was only possible as the first reference methods and commutable reference materials have become available in 2009. And this allowed to switch DQAS from an ALTM-based to an accuracy-based assessment scheme. In parallel, the Office of Dietary Supplements of the NIH set up a vitamin D standardization program based on the split sample measurement design. As the different methods 
had to adjust the standardization of the products to meet the reference. Comparability to potential predicates was lost to more or less extent. However, regulatory bodies accepted and acknowledged that comparability to the higher order reference method is desired. The consistency and comparability is continuously monitored by assessment schemes provided by DQAS and also by the CDC. Retrospective harmonization and standardization in general is not at all an easy task, and many things have to be considered. The most important one being the reference method. If an analyte is not available in pure form, but needs to be purified from biologic material, like for example FD4, its quantitation strongly depends on the method used for purification. The development of better and better techniques allows to improve purification steps and obtain purer and purer material. This, however, would break the definition of the measurement as with an improved purification, a certain mass of substance would then contain a different amount of active ingredient. So it is key to define a procedure and not to deviate from that. A re-standardization of established methods might also lead to new registration of the product and determination of new reference intervals. The change in values would be the biggest impact for customers and patients. That's why it is very crucial to set up communication education programs and platforms to establish a flow of information in both directions to all stakeholders, but also their input back to the initiators. Only a transparent and open dialogue amongst all stakeholders allows to weigh out the pros and cons and to come to a consensus that guarantees the best solution for clinical decision making. So, to summarize, metrological traceability can only be achieved in a joint effort. IVD manufacturers depend on the availability of reference materials and methods, and committees and working groups for standardization depend on the IVD manufacturers to assess and to confirm the feasibility of the respective approach. In case of retrospective standardization, it could be pinned down to identify critical analytes, assess the medical need, and involve all stakeholders. In case of prospective standardization, it is all about to make reference material and methods available. As this is not always straightforward and the value of IVD products is steadily increasing, a close exchange between all stakeholders might be crucial to identify focus areas with the highest need and urgency. Thank you very much for your attention.